Since we've covered the top five most hated metas in Warzone, why don't we cover the top five most loved? As always, this is my opinion, but I like to think for the most part, these are kind of like universally loved by all players in one way or another. And if you're wondering what I mean by loved, I'm not talking about the best metas that we've seen. I'm talking more so about when the community, or in this case me, were really enjoying the game with that current meta. Maybe it was balanced or just a fun time to be playing the game, but comment your favorite meta down below as we get started. At number 5, we have the FFAR. This is probably the most versatile gun on this list. It's got you covered at close, mid, and sometimes even long range, which is extremely rare. If we're talking about the best sniper support guns, this has to be one of, if not the best, that we've ever seen in Warzone. It's an AR with all the benefits of an SMG while still having all the benefits of an AR. This made it perfect for Rebirth, considering these came out about around the same time. Being able to run this with the sniper on Rebirth with no sacrifices was a very, very rare occurrence. Another major plus to this gun was an absolute beauty of an iron sight that allowed you to not have to waste an attachment slot on optic, which is always a nice plus. I made it clear that after the Cold War merge, I was pretty disappointed in like how many guns there were in the game, same with Vanguard, but this is probably my favorite Cold War gun that they added. Some might argue that it was stayed in the meta for a little bit too long, and even after like several nerfs, it was still pretty good for the rest of Warzone 1. And at number 4 we have the Cronin Squall from Warzone 2. This was one of my favorite metas for the sole purpose of it being very balanced. No matter how you kitted this gun out, it would always have some recoil, which is okay since it hit very hard. Compare that to something like the Polymont which we have today which still has no recoil and still hits really hard. Basically, the Squall was a gun that rewarded a player's ability to control recoil which wasn't exactly easy. This unfortunately had one of the most disgusting iron sights we've ever seen in Call of Duty which meant you had to use an attachment slot on an optic. Having a 5th attachment for recoil would have been really nice but whatever. Since long range situations were still possible but much more difficult than most guns, this is a perfect gun to run in Ashika Island which was dominating the meta for a while. Unfortunately after just one, maybe two nerfs, this gun is now completely useless. There's a ground loot 5 attachment Cronin currently in the rotation right now and it might be the worst gold gun in the game. Like seriously, I think I would just rather keep my spawn pistol Vernetti. But oh well, the Cronin will always be missed. At number 3, we have the Amax. So basically, everything that was said about the Cronin can also be said about the Amax. However, there are a few differences. First, and probably most notable, is that they existed in different games. As we all know, Warzone 1 had no visual recoil, which made using this gun a whole lot easier. Since you could actually use the 3x scope, most people using the VLK, it was actually viable at range. Compare that to Warzone 2, where if you used any optic other than a 1x, you were not going to be hitting your shots. Still not a cakewalk, but much more forgiving than the Cronin while still hitting very hard. On top of that, you had some actually decent mobility for a gun so heavy. Heavy hitting. A big part of that mobility was the gun only supporting a 45 round mag, which was fine since you could still get multiple kills with the 45 bullets since the damage was insane. When it was first introduced to the game, it was severely broken, but people still really didn't despise it. And after two separate nerfs, it was still kinda at the forefront of the game. At number 2, we have the RPK from Warzone 2. I know this is going to get so much hate, but just hear me out. I've expressed my love for a lot of the metas in Warzone 2, and honestly, I think for the most part, it's because they're fairly balanced. The RPK was one of the easiest guns to use, but came with some consequences. For starters, it had awful mobility. Aside from weighing you down, the default 75 round drum mag resulted in an eternity between reloads. Also, the close range encounters with this gun were nearly impossible to handle. Other than that, this gun was a laser at mid to long range and also hit harder than anything else in the game at the time. With all the hate surrounding the launch of Warzone 2, I personally think the meta at the time was so much fun, and the RPK being at the center of it all was an absolute blast. Also, I want to mention that during this state of the game, we had backpacks which allowed for a third weapon slot, which made for a ton of fun situations. Running an RPK in Fennec, then a sniper for your backpack slot, made for a lot of fun. Sniper had you covered it long, RPK had you covered it mid and long, and Fennec had you covered it short. Beautiful. Literally no sacrifice to any range whatsoever. Loki he wouldn't mind if they brought backpacks back. But just like the Cronin, the RPK got nerfed into oblivion and is now down there with one of the worst guns you could pick up off ground loot. But it was fun while it lasted. So just a couple honorable mentions I want to list real quick before we get to the number one spot. At number one, we have the Car 98K. The only reason I'm not putting this on this list is because it was kind of like always meta, which I feel like is kind of cheating. You know, a couple months before they removed Resurgence from Warzone 1, they got rid of the damage range. But other than that, this gun was always usable. Mine and probably your favorite sniper to use in Warzone ever. Then we have the Cold War. Or AK-47, which falls into the same umbrella as the Amex and the Cronin Squall. High recoil, high damage. If you were good at the game, you'd do well with it. If you weren't, well, too bad. Then there was the Kilo, which was pretty much a pellet gun, but was still really good. Had no recoil, just had to hit your shots. Super fun. 
At number one, the Growl 556. If you've been playing Warzone since launch, you probably saw this coming. This was just about everybody's favorite meta, and I'm very confident in saying that. Whenever we used to get on, I had a friend who would just call Warzone Growl Simulator, and that couldn't be any more accurate. And the crazy thing is, I don't think anyone even had a problem with it. The beauty of the Growl was 60 round magazine support, the sexiest iron sight in Warzone history, damn near hit scan bullet velocity, and zero recoil. If you notice, I didn't say anything about the damage, and that's because it was certainly above average, but nothing too out of pocket like guns we would see in the future. I'm looking at you, Bruin. This meant despite being easy to control, you still had to hit a decent amount of shots to secure your kill, which is exactly how low recoil guns should be. Not this low skill high reward meta we see now. Another really fun aspect of the ground meta was that we were at a point in the game where your secondary was probably the car 98, the MP5, or if you were absolutely crazy, you had the snake shots or even an RPG, which added that perfect sprinkle of chaos that every meta needs. Everybody considered the gun to be broken at the time, and after seeing what would come next, this may have been one of the most balanced and beloved loadouts the game has ever seen. It somehow hit that perfect equilibrium point of skill and fun to a T that I truly don't think we have ever seen since. But that's going to wrap up my top five most loved Warzone loadouts of all time. Please let me know what your favorite loadout is in the comments down below. Also, if there's any content you want to see on this channel, please drop a comment below and I'll consider making it. But if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, thank you for watching.